C70. Do you really need a cinema camera? I always thought when you buy better gear, your stuff gets better. I'm Riley, and here's my thoughts. A few weeks ago, I got a C70, but there's a few things I do wish it could do better. The first one, autofocus. I find when I compare it to my R5, it doesn't even come close though. I also understand that a camera of this level, most people don't even use autofocus. I just wish it was better. And that's also after a few firmware updates to already make it better. I couldn't imagine it when it first came out. A few main reasons why I bought the C70 in the first place is because it has built-in NDs and the sensor of it is amazing. There's a few things I don't like about it. I'm used to having a touchscreen and this doesn't. It's kind of like using a Blackberry phone with a little wheel versus using an iPhone right here. It's why everything should be a touchscreen. I have no clue why it's not fully touchscreen. You can touch on it to find focus and you can tap on it to track people, but why not make it the whole thing touchscreen? It blows my mind why it's not a full touchscreen. And no one talks about the battery situation for Canon cinema cameras. They're like Apple, they gatekeep their batteries. You basically have to buy batteries from Canon just to use that camera. And they're so overly expensive for no reason, and they just rip you off. Okay, if you wanna buy an official battery from Canon for a BPA30 battery, it's $379.99. How crazy is that, just for a battery? And then a BPA60 battery, the, the bigger one, the one that I wanted to buy is $629.99. To pay $630 for a battery? Are you crazy? That's not even fair. That's so much money. It's also really hard to find official BPA batteries because so many new cameras that come out use them. Most of them are back ordered. Besides the crazy price tag, they're also just really hard to find. If you were to buy enough batteries to have a good setup, I would say you should buy two or three BPA-60 batteries. Let's say you buy three of them. That's close to $2,000. You can buy a lens with that much money. $2,000 for batteries should be a crime. Do that four times, that's how much the camera costs. It's ridiculous. So what everyone does is everyone ends up making a rig out of the camera and putting V-mount on it. So buying the bottom plate, the rails, and then the V-mount but then all of a sudden your camera is twice the size and twice the weight. And then if you buy knockoff, like off Amazon or AliExpress or whatever it is, they all say, oh, it works. But most of the time when you put it in, it might work for a month or a few months, but then eventually it's gonna say, does this display Canon logo? And then if you say yes, it says, this is a counter for battery, do not use. If you say no, it does the same thing. And then from there, your camera won't even turn on. So that money you spent, on a battery, it's just thrown out the window. I'm gonna buy one off Amazon and find it for myself. So I'm gonna buy this one off Amazon and I'll make a video if it works, if it doesn't work, for how long it works. On top of that too, the C70 is more fussy over batteries than most other cameras. It's kind of similar to the C300 Mark III. If you have like an older cinema camera, like anything past or older than a C300 Mark III, you can basically buy any third party battery, any Amazon special and it works fine. I wish someone told me about all this battery stuff way before I bought the camera, but I think regardless, I'm still gonna go V-mount. And in my opinion, the main difference between the C70 and the C300 Mark III, besides the EF mount and RF mount and the layout and the SDI components, the thing that I care about is it's CF Express Type B, arguably the best type of memory to ever be created. They're blazing fast and they're reliable. Everything is expensive for memory. The C70 takes a V90 SD card to run all the formats, like the RAW and the 4K 120. And the V90 SD card is basically the same price as a CF Express Type B card. Why can't it just use CF Express Type B? All I see that is a complete marketing grab just so someone will get the C300 Mark III instead of the C70. And the read and write speeds aren't even close. The R5 has one CF Express Type B and it's so fast, I don't even have a second one. When it's full, I pop it out of my camera, throw it into my laptop, transfer all the footage from the CF Express card onto my SSD, boom, 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 takes less than five minutes, pop it back out, put it in the camera, quick format, and see you later. V90 speeds are slow compared to the Type B cards. It can take 30, 35 minutes to empty a 256 gig card, but hey, it has better codecs, so it's faster. So those are some of the negatives. The image out of this, 
the C70. It's not even close. It's way better, way better than the R5. Not even close. It's here and then here. It's not even. On your phone, you can tell the difference. If you have two phones and you look at both of them, everyone would choose the C70 image. The R5 doesn't have great dynamic range in the first place. I think it has like 10 or 11 stops. And I find the image not very clean. I always find it a bit noisy. So to go from that to go to the C70 with the dual gain output, I did an interview last week where I had my A cam as the C70 and the R5 as my B cam. And I was going back and forth between the shots. I both had them at their native ISOs and the R5 wasn't even close to the C70. The C70 was so nice. The colors, the, just the overall feel of it was just so nice. Even though I shot in 4K HQ mode on the R5, I found the C70's image looked better and cleaner. C-Log 2 gives you so much room to play with for colors, just for everything. It, it, it holds together so well. Honestly, I know it's not, but it kind of feels the same as the R5 AK RAW. Just the room you have, you actually can use the C70 footage and actually edit it, unlike the R5. <laughs> I do like the menus on the C70. I love how many options it gives you. I love how you can control almost everything. You can put different buttons. You can do so much. But why is it not touchscreen? It would be so much faster, so much easier. Life would be so much better if it was a touchscreen menu. And yeah, I know. The more you use it, the easier it gets. And the more you just do it without thinking. I'm also a strong believer in cages for my cameras. The cage I have on my R5 has protected it so much. The amount that I beat that camera up from slamming it into stuff, dropping it on the ground, from being in golf carts and I'm falling out of the back, from being on the seat next to me, bouncing around with Ibis going, trying to focus on the seat the whole time. One time it was in the back of my truck on my tonal cover and I drove away with it. I was doing a time lapse of me stacking wood drove away and I fell right in the pile of wood. Logs were on top and it rolling around in the back. Took it out, perfectly fine. Lens is fine, camera's fine. Looks like nothing ever happened to it. It's so much money to put into a camera, so you gotta do everything you can to protect it. I put one on the C70. It looks great, it does everything I needed to. And the C70 does feel a lot more rugged than the R5 does. But I don't know how well it's weather sealed because it has the fan and so many exhaust ports, intakes, exhausts. Imagine Canon thought of that and I imagine it should be pretty good. I haven't tested it firsthand, so I guess we'll see what happens. I don't know if it's just my camera. The scroll wheel feels loose. On my R5, it's nice and tight. There's no rattling or clicking. It moves how you want it to. It's It works fine. Like I never thought about if it could be loose. And then on this, the first day I got that camera, I was hitting all the buttons and it feels loose. It kind of feels like it's like cheaply made just that one button it's the same button off the r5 like it's the exact same type but it like rattles around and like when you, when you click it it just doesn't feel as good as the r5 does it works fine and there's nothing wrong with it but it just feels different from the r5 the 4k 60 and the 4k 120 look great when you're in 4k 120 you can't tap on the screen to select focus the camera kind of does whatever it wants to the dual gain output stops being dual gain when you're past 50 frames a second. So after that, it just becomes a single readout. Honestly, it's hard to tell the difference with an on or off. The sensor is just so good. Unless you really try to look for the difference, it's hard to see it. Most people will just not see it. But then again, the devil's in the details. It could be that one tiny thing, just that little extra poof of quality that makes someone choose your film over another or your look over another. So from saying all of this, from saying everything I said about the goods and bads, I want you to understand one thing. If you take one thing from this video, it's this. If you're on the fence about buying this camera and you are thinking about it, please look into all the other things that go with the camera. So the memory cards, maybe the cage, look into batteries, look into if you want to spend all the money for a Canon battery or go V-mount. It does have DC in, so you can plug it in. But if you're not doing an interview, that doesn't matter. So I'll definitely upgrade to V-mount. If BPA30 battery only lasts two hours, with V-mount, I'll end up spending $1,200 on top of the camera cost. You can justify basically spending 
$10,000 on the camera, here's what I'll say. Do it, just do it. If you watch all the videos, you know you want to. It's also a good write-off too, so to spend $10,000, you'll save that much back in HST. Because for me, regardless, I'm paying that to the government, so I'd rather pay it to myself and upgrade my gear. All right, that's it. See ya, I guess. Talk to your inner wild crocodile. Is that, how, is that what it is? Talk to your, talk to your inner wild crocodile? No, there's no way that's actually what it is. Talk to you in a wild crocodile saying. Let us say. Oh, see you later, alligator. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> Uh, what did I say? Talk to you in a wild crocodile? I, I like that better. <laughs> See you later, alligator. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> okay, bye.